Good evening, everyone. This is MIS 304, uh, the online uh, section. And uh, the title of the course is Information Technology. My name is Karma Sharif, and I will be your instructor uh, this spring. Before we talk about the course, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, this is my eighth year here at Texas Southern University. I am an information or an MIS uh, professor. I have taught almost every single course in the MIS curriculum, so I'm, I'm very comfortable teaching MIS 304, which is an overview of information technology in general. Uh, before I came to Texas Southern, I was at Texas Tech in Lubbock, and before that I was at Temple University in Philadelphia, and I graduated from Texas A&M um, with a PhD in Information Systems, and um, uh, I think that's all about me. I, I do research on mobile technology, so you will see me a lot talking about mobile technology. That's just because I'm, I'm interested in that uh, particular topic and doing research on it. Now, uh, what this course is about, it is about um, one thing is understanding the different IT trends that are um, operating in, in business nowadays. So. Um, there, there are a lot of changes that happened the last three years, three, five years. And um, of course, you, you started hearing, uh, hearing about the cloud. You started hearing about virtualization. Um, you started, of course, noticing a lot of applications being going mobile. Um, we have social media. Um, so a, a lot of changes and now we are hearing about wearables, things that we will wear that will be able to communicate and will collect data about you. So the, the Nike shoes that you will be wearing will be counting the steps that you are taking and will give you um, a summary of how you are, how close or how far you are from uh, following a physical uh, fitness plan. So a, a lot of new trends are um, are, 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 are uh, shaping the way that we are communicating, the way we do business. So we need to talk, talk and discuss these. Uh, we also are going to use different information technologies that are important for businesses today. So one of them is Excel. Up until that day and age, Excel is very important in a lot of industries like uh, oil and gas, like um, healthcare, and these are like two big industries that are in um, or have a, a big presence and a, a felt presence in, in Houston. Um, we'll also um, go over access in more details, so you will be able, you will learn how do I query. The database how can i extract information from the database and we use uh, tools that where the skill is easily transferable from one tool to the other uh, by that i mean is that by learning how to query access it's very easy uh, to query another database that you may be working uh, with We'll also be using SAP, and, and, and that's an excellent opportunity for you guys who will be graduating soon and will be looking uh, for a job because a lot of companies are actually looking for graduates who have already been exposed to SAP. And that's why uh, the first thing that um, is on the slide uh, is that this is a course that if you master the skill set in just this course, you are guaranteed a good job in one of the large organizations. The, where I, a lot of times I, I hear from employers saying, do you have a good student who can work with Excel, who can do advanced things in Excel? Do you have a good student who knows, have been exposed to SAP? So if you really do well and you expect you master the skill set out of this one course, you, you have a good chance of getting a good job that pays very well. And 
<coughs> starting a good a good career. The way that I will be uh, structuring the course is that on Tuesdays we will be talking about these concepts, but um, I don't want to talk a lot, so I will be introducing the topic in half an hour, and then the rest of the class, a group of students, will be going into details onto um, uh, the topic that we will be talking about. So I may, uh, as I said, I'll take 30 minutes, talk to you about, for example, the cloud or about virtualization or about 3D printing, and then they go into more details. They show you a video. They uh, discuss things with you in, in, in class. They give you questions. Um, and that's, of course, online. Uh, you are not expected to come to, to school or to listen to this. But we will have these synchronous sessions where both you and I are in, in the room. Now, Thursdays will always be lab. So we will be covering Excel, Access, and SAP. Um, and the way I will conduct it is that uh, I will start an exercise and I'll show you the steps. Um, at the beginning, I'll show you all of the steps, but towards the middle of, of, of the course, I start like giving you the, or getting you started on an exercise and letting you finish it on your own. Um, a, a lot of times I, I don't have any uh, problem or like students did not have problems uh, continuing an exercise where they are given very detailed instructions on how to continue and, and just like getting started with with the video. So uh, you will watch, you either watch the video and, and do the lab, finish the lab, and um, or you can just like follow the instructions in, in the handout and do it yourself. Um, you have all the liberty of doing one or the other. Now, um, this this is a course really that's that's not difficult at all. I mean, like uh, I I don't think that it it would be compared to finance or accounting or or anything like these courses where a lot of students find them challenging. So it's not a challenging course in terms of the skill set that you acquire. What might be challenging is the amount of time you will have to invest in order to uh, meet the requirements. Uh, every, every week, you are expected to finish three things. One is a quiz over the Tuesday lecture. So just like to make sure that you have actually listened to both my presentation and the group presentation, you get um, a very simple multiple choice quiz that goes over what we have covered, the important concepts that I want you to know getting or graduating or finishing uh, this course about information technology. Um, the second thing is um, a lab. As I said, I, sh I show you the steps and for the first three or four labs, you actually get all of the, the steps for finishing the lab. <coughs> so again, you will be uh, you will have a video that you will watch in order to finish the lab, or you will have you have a set of instructions that um, you are expected to follow in order to finish the lab. Whatever you are uh, comfortable with it is fine with me. The most important thing is that you submit the lab on on time. The third thing is an assignment that reinforces the lab. So it's a very similar problem uh, to the one that we will um, tackle in the lab or we will, will try and solve in the lab, but um, a different context. But nothing new, no, no new skill set you, uh, will be required or no new functions that you will have to uh, know on your own. <clears throat> now, I've, I've structured the course uh, to make it easy for you to access the material. So everything, the slides, the labs, the assignments, the quizzes are posted under course content. So when you log on to the uh, Blackboard, um, click on course content and you should see folders that are numbered by the week. So you have week one, week two, week three. And when you click on each of the weeks, uh, you will be able to see your lab for that week, your assignment for that week, and, and, and the quiz. We're working with the TAs to populate as many 
of these folders as possible so that you have access to that material um, ahead of time. Now for um, it, it, one, the only way that you can submit these um, deliverables, the labs, the assignments, the, the quizzes is through Blackboard and through Blackboard links, which means there is no way that you can email me your lab or your assignment. As soon as I get that email, I actually delete it. I don't even look at at um, at, at the deliverable. And that's, that's for two reasons. One is that I do not have space. Um, that the university does not assign me that much space to allow for everyone or for a lot of students to email me uh, files. I have, of course, like the, the department email us a lot of information along with, with the university. So I, I, I simply don't have that space. The second thing is um, insisting on you delivering on Blackboard uh, uh, reinforce the due date. So you cannot email me after uh, the due date your uh, your assignments or anything like this, it's through Blackboard and you have to uh, honor the, the due date, which is everything is due on Sunday at 11.59. So you have the weekend, you have a beginning of the week or actually a week before, you have almost two weeks to finish any assignment because um, you will be given that assignment during the week and it's not due until the following week. So when we start on January 23rd, you will see that the assignment is not um, is not due, or actually we start the January 28th. Uh, the, the assignment is not due until the following week. So you have ample time to finish the lab, the assignment, and, and, and the quiz. Now, um, uh, so there are no late deliverables uh, will be accepted. You, you have, as I said, to watch the due dates and, and, and submit uh, before the due date. As soon as um, Monday 12 midnight comes, the link will disappear, which means you cannot see it. So, and that's 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 how we reinforce the, the due date. Um, I know that <clears throat> that's an online course, but it's also a statement date that you take uh, in class exams. So you have to come to class on these days, um, March 6th, April 10th, and May 6th. Now, uh, I, I have the Excel and, ex and Access review that's on January 23rd, but it is online. So the first exam is online, and, and then the mid and it, but it's not graded. The only reason that you are taking the review exam is for you to assess your mastery level of MIS 204, what you have learned in the prereq course. And I understand again that a number of you may not have taken MIS 204, may have taken CS 116 or have taken another course in Harris County or North Harris or um, um, HCC. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not questioning that, but I'm saying that for you to continue in the course, you really need to know what, what you are expected to have known through MIS 204 or an equivalent. If you do not know that material, then you will have uh, one of two options. One is watch the review sessions online that I will post and um, make sure that you know all of the things expected from you for Excel and Access. That's one up, and which means that you will pass the review exam. The second option is, and I hope that people would not choose that second option because it's more time consuming, is that if you do not have, if you feel you do not have enough time to get all of that material done, then you will have to finish um, chapters 1 through 5 in the book and chapter 11 and 12, which is equivalent to what we have covered in MIS 204. So your book comes with 14 chapters. The book comes with 14 chapters. Uh, seven of them I have already covered in MIS 204. I understand that a lot of you, as I said, 
did not take MIS 204 or did not use a similar book that covers all of that material, it's up to you to know that material. As I said, you have either one of two options, either watch the archives, make sure you master the, the skill set before Thursday, January 23rd, or do the chapter one through five and um, 11 and 12 assignments in the book and they are uh, laid out on, on the syllabus. I'll, I'll show you the syllabus in just a little bit. So you, ha you have e one of, of these two options. Actually, you are forced to do the second option, which means finishing assignment one through five and 11 and 12 if you fail the, the review exam. So if you fail the, access, the Excel and, and Access Review exam, exam on January 23rd, then you really don't have any option but to do the assignments so that, um, because I, I continue to test you on the MIS 204 material in the first and second midterm and the final. So um, it, is, it is important that you master that skill set before January 23rd, and it is very possible, it's very doable, if you give time, um, allow yourself time to, to do that, and I'm, we're doing it at the beginning of the semester, hopefully uh, the other courses are not catching at that speed. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, for the face-to-face -face exams, there will be several sessions on, on these days, so on March 6th, you will see that the exam is offered at um, 11, and then it's also offered at 2, and offered at 4, and then offered at 5.30. So you have four options for you to attend. I understand some of you are working, and they may be working at 5.30, and, and, and um, may not be able to attend the exam at 5.30. They have to attend the exam during that day, on that day, March 6th. What time? I mean, like, you, you choose which time will work best for you. Um, the, the, the reason that we set a time this, this uh, semester for the online courses is to make sure that you can come to class at 5.30. You have the option of coming earlier if you want, but you cannot say, I cannot come to class because, as I said, for the for the midterms and the final, you have to come to um, and attend, like to take the exam face to face. You cannot do it online and, and that's a state mandate. We do not have an option. You do not have that option. Um, okay, so um, I will give you a sign up sheet on the discussion board and you just like sign up which time you want to come so that I have enough copies for you all. As I said, I mean, I, um, the Tuesday lectures, we've already talked about them. I introduce a topic and the topic is something that is either it is a trend, a new trend that we see in the IT industry, or it is a challenge uh, in dealing with the technology, or it is a new opportunity that's out there or we're talking about how do we manage IT. So towards the end of the semester, we talk about project management and how do we manage IT projects? Because a lot of you may not be MIS majors or may not, be, may not work in technology, but you will definitely be a manager one day and you need to understand how do you manage IT products? How do you prioritize them? Um, how do you fund them? How do you... Um, operate IT uh, workshops so that they generate money instead of them being just an expense. Uh, so these are like the different topics that we will talk about. As I said, there will be always a group that is uh, going into depth in, in, in that topic. The group may present like a, a YouTube video that they find online that um, um, have interesting things about the topic, um, but every student on the group must at least present one slide. And I, and, I, and I put that request at the beginning of the semester, please do not read off of the slide. And think about yourself attending a class. 
how do you feel about me reading off of slides? I'm like, it will be very boring. And I, I don't think that uh, you will feel that I respect your time uh, just reading off of slides. So it's exactly the same for your classmates. Um, no student wants to sit either online or in class to hear someone reading for him off of a slide. You want to be to capture their attention. You want to pose a question, to make things interesting for them, to uh, make them listen to what they to what you say, and actually respect respect you as someone intelligent, having taken the time to research a topic. Uh, presenting something that is interesting to the, them because it will affect the way that they will do business, the way that um, they will communicate. Um, talk about the implications of that technology for businesses, for individuals, and so on. That's what will make it really interesting. As we said, Thursday Labs, we are working on a problem, either solving it using Excel or Access or SAP. Um, beginning of, of the semester for the first, actually half of the semester, um, I'm giving you all of the steps after that you are expected uh, you are expected to uh, to um, finish these steps on your own and then submit the work that you have done. Now, a, a, a lot of times I, I have seen, and, and from my experience last semester, uh, I find out that students who actually attend the lab online end up with A's or B's. Actually, um, I had like seven and four of them had an A and three had a B. Now, if you do not attend, there is a very high chance that you will not actually listen to the archive and watch the archive. And you will end up either missing the labs, you're not submitting the lab assignments, and, um, and the, the labs and the assignments, plus also ending up dropping the course. And I, and I don't want to say that at the very the first session, but I, I, I want to learn you, and I want you to give you... Um, a real view of, 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 of how the course is. Um, I, I, I talked to a couple of students who actually dropped last semester. Last semester, I had 38 uh, students in the online class, which is very similar to what I am starting with this semester. I end up with 18 students at the end of the semester, so only 18 students uh, continued in class at the end of the semester. Out of the 18, there were like three or four who had an incomplete, so they did not um, feel that they are comfortable taking the final. And people may think, okay, this, this is a terrible instructor. She is not well preparing her students for the, for the exam and, and, and so on. And it's easy that we can go this route. <laughs> but I think... I, I, I provide, I have a lot of, of, of support um, for the opposite of, of, of that argument is that I, I think I provide a lot of, of help to students, both face-to-face -face and online. So anytime a student has a problem, even if they cannot come to school, uh, I use um, a software called TeamViewer, and you may want like to research it now and actually download it. And that allow me to log on to their computer. So if they have a problem or they don't know how to do something or they have watched the video but really am st still skeptical uh, about doing a particular step, then we use that team viewer and I log on to their machine and I show them on their machine how to do it. So it becomes much clearer and, and more easier for them uh, to do the work. Plus, all of the online students, I give them the option of attending labs on, on campus. So if, if this is an online course that you are taking, but you are still coming on campus, there are the, the labs will be conducted again uh, on uh, several in, in different time slots. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. 
that you can attend. I think um, to, uh, Thursday, it is the normal face-to-face uh, -face class that's from 11 to 12.15. So if you can make it on, on Thursday, 11 to 12.15, <coughs> you have um, Monday and Wednesday, I think, from 3 to 4, and then Tuesday and uh, Wednesday again from 4 to 5. So a lot of options for you. <coughs> I'm sure that if you uh, feel that you need the the one-on-one -on -one help and you want to come to school, then one of these four different or five different uh, lab sessions <coughs> will, will suit you and will be convenient for you. Now, uh, going back to the idea of, of, of students dropping the course, what happens is that I enforce the rule that no deliverable will be submitted after the due date. Now, students will test me, which means first quiz come and they send me an email after the quiz have expired or does not exist anymore because the due date is gone. And they say, <clears throat> I had a problem while I was doing the quiz, the, my computer froze and I wasn't able to submit. Well, actually blackboard captures everything single thing that you do so sometimes like students get into the quiz and um, want to see the question so they go from one question to the next to the next to the next in order to see all of them and then they are not able to go back <laughs> and then they have already submitted answer the answers is they did not submit anything but um it's or everything is recorded in in blackboard so irrespective of the reason irrespective of the reason I, I i know that for some it may be a valid uh a valid a valid reason that they the their machine froze but the thing is there are like 12 quizzes i only count 10 same thing for the lab same thing for the for the assignments so I don't count all of the assignments. I, I allow for two to be dropped. Someone may ask, what if I have submitted all of them? Well, if you have submitted all of the assignments, all of the labs, all of your uh, quizzes, you get extra credit. So I'm rewarding you. And I actually uh, would not recommend that students miss a quiz or miss an assignment because at the end, at the end of the semester, and I know people do not listen at the beginning of the semester, but at the end of the semester, the only thing that I take into consideration when you need a couple of points that will bump you to a higher letter grade is whether you have submitted all of your assignments, all of your quizzes, all of your labs. And of course, um, passing your exams. And the reason that I'm saying this, it is, is that it's really a big problem uh, in, in 204 and 304 about copying the labs and copying the assignments. And, and um, people may say, how do you know they have submitted? I mean, like people may have the same, they follow actually the same labs because they follow your, your instructions. Well, um, if I have six or seven students submitting a file with the same spelling mistake, then that raises a red flag, right? If you submit an assignment with the name of another student on it, then again, raises a red flag. If I look at the properties of your file, and again, I see that it has originated from another student, it raises a red flag. A lot of times we do not check, and I'm telling you, I, I may not be checking every single lab, but there are some labs that, I mean, like it's very flagrant. <laughs> I, I cannot ignore it. Um, but those who copy the labs end up um, failing the exams. And I don't see the point of gaining 10% and losing 45% doesn't make sense. Now, we talked about this is a course where uh, you will be able to get a good job just by finishing or mastering the skill set here. And uh, 
students uh, always tell me, you expect us to work that all that amount of time, put all of that amount of time into the course. And I say, yes, I expect you to put all of that time into the course because without, without the technology skills, you can go that far. Now, tell me what kind of job can you get nowadays without technology? Very few, very few. And, 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 and to making, make it really alarming for you, by 2017, 40% of the jobs that you see today will disappear because of automation, because of a robot who will be doing your job. Now, I've attended Gartner Symposium last fall, and they were, they were showing amazing things. Robots that, they, that can drive a car, can uh, fix certain things, in, at home, like a, a work as a plumber, for example, um, artificial intelligent uh, software that can um, write actually articles. So they're saying that Forbes, instead of hiring uh, journalists, they actually have software that write their reports and the software can actually have a style and have a voice so it's really getting very alarming if, if these respected jobs that we used to fill are now being replaced or are being filled or are, are being uh, conducted by, by robots and uh, software, then you tell yourself what kind of jobs will be left for you if you do not have a skill set that a computer cannot replace. It, it, again, it, it is, and that's why we say you have to master the skill set here in, um, in, in, in 304. And you have to put a lot of time into it. Why? Because without this course, you may be, you may be earning like $10, but with the course, you will be earning 70,000 uh, instead of an hour, 70,000 annually or, or, or more. So, from a from a finance point of view, from an investment uh, standpoint, it doesn't make sense. The other thing that doesn't make sense is for you to put um, at, at least a thousand dollars. The 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 cost of the course is a thousand dollars to put one thousand dollars into uh, this course as a tuition. Even though if you may have like financial aid, you are expected to pay financial aid uh, financial aid afterwards, and the government will make sure that they collect that, 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 that amount of money. Now, it doesn't make sense to put that amount of, of money into the course and then do not submit the assignments, do not submit the labs. Reach April 10th, last day to drop, and drop the course and lose all of that money. Now, what I would tell you today is sit and tell yourself, do I have time every week <clears throat> to finish a 15 minute quiz, do a lab that will take an hour and 15 minutes because that's the amount of time, the maximum amount of time that I will take to record a lab. And do an assignment, which if I understand the lab will take at least an hour and 15 minutes again. So it will take either an hour and 15 minutes or may take a little bit more depending on whether you fully understand the lab or not. If you think you don't have enough time for, for that, then I think it's, it's, it's appropriate and it is wise for you to drop and add another course. Drop 304 and take something else. If you tell me I'm graduating this semester or I'm graduating in a year and if I take if I drop 304 today, I will not be able to graduate. What I'm telling you, I will not compromise the requirements for the course, which means the, I, I, if, if I find that half of the class does, do not submit labs and assignments, I would not go and say, okay, I will uh, relieve you of the labs and the assignments. I have no problem, as I said, giving zeros to half of the class because they have not submitted. Uh, because I think it is important 
to equip equip them with the skills. So there won't be a compromise. I will be consistent throughout. I will expect you to put everything at single effort. And again, what happened last semester is a proof. As I said, we started with 38, ended up with 16 or 18 students. Four of them took an incomplete and actually continuing this semester. So as I said, take the time and assess, do I have um, enough time given all of my priorities to uh, put or to finish the, the quiz, the lab and the assignment or I don't. Now, as I said, the, the assignments are, are very important for you to do on your own because they prepare you very well for the exam. So what you see on the lab will be exactly the same like what you see on the assignment and will be exactly the same like what you see on, on the test. So it is important. As I said, it will not take you more than an hour and 15 minutes if you have done the lab yourself. Uh, or maybe a, a, just a little bit longer, so maximum, say, two hours. A lot of times we see students copying from each other, even though I give them uh, the same <laughs> kind of, of, of advice at the beginning of the semester, but they find this an easy way out. So they opt to take 10% and drop 45%. You copy the assignments and you think, oh, okay, I will go later and, and look at them. You never do. You go into the exam and, and you fail the exam. And if you fail any exam, uh, that, that really lower your chances of, of, of uh, passing the course because you have to pass the exams. I give makeups and I don't want you to think, okay, I will have a second chance. It all depends upon, of course, the class average. So if you are the only person who who, who uh, failed an exam, that that's that's problematic. But if 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 we have problems, um, then I I, I give a makeup. Uh, now again, students who attend the labs virtually, which means they log on at the time when I conduct the lab, have a very high chance of getting an A or a B. So if you think you are not disciplined enough to do things on time, um, at least like for the lab, then log on at 5.30, watch me do it and do it on your own while you are watching. And um, that will, will, will improve your ability to complete the assignment. Of course, you can start the assignment right after we finish uh, the lab and that way you are done. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, there is no chance for you to forget uh, if you start the assignment right after we finish the lab. Now, talking about this week and, and, and um, next week, because it's very important that you master MIS <clears throat> 204 Excel and Access, I will spend the first two weeks. So the first two weeks will not be synchronous. You don't have to log on at 5.30. You can just like watch the archives and watch the videos that I will uh, post on, on Blackboard. At the end of week two, that's Thursday, the January 23rd, you will be given an online exam. That exam is not part of your grade. The purpose of the exam is two. One is it allow me uh, to know how strong you are uh, from a technology standpoint and that's how I'm uh, like creating or structuring the group so I as I said I don't want like all of the good or techy students to be in, 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 in one group the second objective is to let you know what you have not mastered and whether really online um, instruction is the way for you to learn the material. It might be better for you to sit in a face-to-face -face, um, in a face-to-face -face lab or an on-campus lab. So if you fail the, the exam, then <clears throat> I give you the option of attending one of the uh, four other labs sessions 
and and that way you have like a um, a one-on-one -on -one help on finishing your your lab and you can also ask questions regarding uh, the SI. It's very important that you master 204 material um, because I, I don't think that you will be able to complete really 304 without without knowing 204 well. So and again the material will continue to appear on on tests. So remember um, Thursday, January the 16th, Tuesday, January the 21st, and Thursday, January the 23rd, you do not have a synchronous session. So you don't have to log on at 5.30. Um, and I, I take that back. Actually, on January 23rd, that's Thursday, you have to log on right at 5.30 because that's when you will take the online exam. And you have to upload it before the the due date, uh, or before before 6:45, the end of class. And and that tells me, are you able to finish the questions in an hour and 15 minutes or not? It's not in your best interest to get help while doing the exam. As I said, the there are no grades to it, so it, it won't it won't benefit you to get someone to complete the assignment for you. It's only um, um, a way for you to assess, one, do I have I learned the material or not, two, whether online is, is the best way for you to learn the material. So your assignments for this week is to very closely read the syllabus. Make sure that you read the syllabus. You will also see that under the syllabus link, there is something called the class contract. And the class contract has a set of responsibilities that I will abide by. And um, I think I have it online. You may not be able to see it, but I'll, I'll just like go over it. So it says that I will cover all of the learning objectives that are outlined in the syllabus. So whatever I post on the syllabus as I something that I will cover, you you are assured I will cover. You will have your weekly recordings of lectures and labs. Um, sometimes I m may be uh, presenting in a conference, so I may not be able to hold it at 5:30 but I always make the recording available that week. So I will not miss a lecture or a lab. They will always be either a recording or an actual synchronous session. Now, I understand a lot of, <clears throat> of students after signing up for the online find that it is very challenging and decide that they want a face-to-face uh, session. As I said, I will always either help you online or help you face to face or allow you to attend a face to face session if you realize that this is in your best interest. If you send me an email that I, I will respond with a maximum of 24 hours, uh, I just like um, want you and I, I, will, I, I will send an announcement is that the only thing that I would require from you is that in the subject matter, put the course. If you use Blackboard to email me, it will automatically do it for you. It will automatically do it for you. So it will say MIS 304. If you have already memorized my, my email address and are emailing me from outside of Blackboard, so please put the subject um, MIS 304 and that I am cognizant of it. Now, um, any changes that I will make to the schedule because of anything that may happen, I will give you ample 
time to adapt to that change and respond in case like you are not able to adapt. Now, um, for the assignments, uh, we have actually two TAs this semester, so you will get quick feedback regarding your labs, your assignments, your quizzes. We also um, are going to give you alerts of when uh, things are due. So a day before they are due, we send you emails telling you assignments are due or a quiz is due, it's about to close and so on. Uh, we will give you feedback as to how you did on a lab, an assignment, on a quiz compared to other students in class. So you will look at the average, you look at the highest and the lowest. Um, you get specific feedback, of course, on, on exams because I tell you exactly what you have missed and why and the, the points that were taken off and what you should have done. Now, this is an online session, so we may have very limited discussions, but uh, sometimes we will have these discussions, and I expect that even if you are, if you do not agree with me or with other students, that you, you will be respectful to all students at all times. Now, my expectations, and I, you have my signature in there, or the electronic signature, <laughs> Now, your responsibilities is that this is an online course. You have to watch the archives um, every week. So you have to watch the Tuesday and Thursday archives and, and labs. And um, one thing that I want you to let you know that the pages are tracked, which means every single link that is there on Blackboard Anytime you access it, the system um, capture your name and the number of times you have accessed the link. So if you, there is no way that you can claim you have done an assignment when you have not accessed the link. Of course, uh, like, uh, it, it, I mean, I I'm going that far. Just um, it's it's not for the purpose of grading as much as it is for 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 research purposes. Just like to see how mobile technology is improving student uh, learning of of technology. You agree by continuing in the course and by submitting the class contract that you will submit the labs, the assignment and quizzes on the due dates and that there will be no makeup. So if you miss one of them, you will not email me and tell me, can I please submit my lab or my assignment or my quiz late? Now, this may be very harsh to some, but as I said, remember, I only count 10 out of the 12. What people may say, what if we have 10 only? If we have 10, I only count eight. So you're allowed to drop two labs, two quizzes, and two assignments. If you submit all of them, then you have um, extra credit at the end of the semester, and that helps you if you are borderline between two letter grades. Now, you have to watch exam reviews. Really, I, I, I do not know of anyone who actually passed the exam without watching the reviews. And on the other side, I know of a lot of students who come to the exam without watching the reviews. And I don't understand it, really. I don't understand. I mean, I show you a sample of an exam. Almost 85% of the questions, in, and, and sometimes it's 100% are coming from the review. And the review doesn't take more than 40, 45 minutes. Why wouldn't you watch it once or twice before you take the exam? It makes no sense. I hope I hope you will you will think about that. You will think about what I'm saying now and say, uh, yeah, I really need to watch these reviews before I take the exam because uh, I, I don't want to be begging for points and it, it really doesn't work with me. You keep on begging and I'd say, oh, you have to retake the course or you, you have to take whatever you uh, worked for in the semester. If you are shooting for an A, you need to work for an A. If you are shooting for a C, you need to pass your exams. You need to pass. Remember, and passing the exam meaning 
that you do your labs, you do your assignments and um, because it helps you and you also watch the archives. Okay, uh, for, for group projects, and we only have one group project and we have one presentation, I do not take claims as a proof of work. What does that mean? That means that if um, for some reason on the day of the presentation you do not present and then you come and say, I've done the research um, and even your group members may say he had done the research but you did not deliver to me. The value that you deliver is an actual presentation. If you do not uh, deliver that, then I cannot, I cannot give you points. And, and there is no point in arguing. The purpose of that contract is for us to agree on um, the terms that we will conduct uh, business together. <laughs> and, and the business is that you will submit the deliverables and I will deliver the instruction uh, to you. So I hope that we all agree on that at the beginning of the semester. There is no point in arguing because it really doesn't feel good for both of us, for us to argue over points or anything like that. The whole purpose of you actually enrolling in the class is to learn the skill set. So if you don't learn it and uh, for one reason or the other, and I understand that people have priorities and they need to work and they have families and all of that. but like be fair to me and to yourself um, do not ask me for for something that violates the contract that we both signed at the beginning of the semester so um, claims are not graded whether from you or from your uh, group members um, you do not deliver you do not get credit that that's simple now um, a lot of times arguments start in groups so people may, <coughs> may, may, may do the work and then group members refuse to accept uh, the work. If, if, if that happens for one reason or the other, you have to be ready to prepare your part outside of your group um, on the day <coughs> of your presentation. Same thing for the group project. If um, you do your work and the group decides it's not of the quality and they don't want to include what you have done in the the system that they are delivering and again you may um, you may submit what you have on the due date outside of, of your group but I don't suggest that because in most cases I have I have to tell you this I, I found that uh, in most cases the group had um, good reasons not to include it. It's, it's really a, a low quality kind of work, lousy work, and, and, and someone wants to just like put it so that they can get credit. Um, and a group leader or a group, um, a project leader decide they will redo the whole thing. So I'm saying if, if that's the case, I will give you the points for and what you deserve for what you have uh, delivered, even though they may not use it. <clears throat> you agree that you will not copy labs, you will not copy assignments or quizzes. Uh, there is no way that you can copy exams, I'm sorry about that. But um, you agree that you will not do that. Because as I said, they don't count for much. So you, you don't gain much by having these. All they do is they, um, they make you procrastinate more in terms of preparing for an exam. You think, okay, uh, before the exam, I'll be able to look at the labs and the assignments and figure out how to do them. That never happens. That never happens, and you take my word for it. And you don't want to be in a, in a position where very late in the semester you're dropping the course because you don't want to take an F or, or you don't want to take um, um, an I or whatever. Um, as I said, you will you agree to be respectful to the professor and the fellow students and all that. <clears throat> so that that's all in terms of the contract. So your assignment for this week is to um, read the syllabus and and take a quiz over the syllabus. So you're not taking a quiz over um, 
a course material, that might be an, a very easy quiz that you will score full points on it. But remember, if you, have, if you take the quiz on the syllabus, you cannot come later in the semester and say, I did not know that I'm supposed to do this or that. You already know because you have taken the quiz on the syllabus, you have signed the class contract. So you, I have two documentation to show you are very aware of <clears throat> what to expect. And I actually have the recording uh, for that video. Uh, you also want to watch the review Thursday um, and Tuesday before you take the exam. There will be one review on Excel, one review on Access. And <clears throat> you need to watch both uh, before you take the exam on Thursday. So there will be no synchronous session on Thursday, January 16th, Tuesday, January 21st. And Thursday 23rd, there is no synchronous session. I will not be conducting a synchronous session, but you will be taking an exam so you have to log on at 5.30 and take the exam and upload at 6, um, at 6.45. Um, <clears throat> trying to look now at the syllabus. And I think we have already covered everything. So... On the syllabus, you have the office hours, you have the, the text that you need for this course. And it's very important that you buy the book because we will cover every single chapter from 6 up until 14. So as I said, 1, 2, 5, and 11, and 12 are MIS 204. I'm not going to cover them, but the skill set is in the review. Um, MIS, um, so if you fail the exam, then you get to submit all of these assignments. They are listed under um, week one. So here are all of the labs and the assignments that it says will be required if you fail um, the exam. So for week one, um, if, if you think you don't know, if you watch the archive for the review and you think, no, I, I certainly am not at that level, I cannot do it, then you may want like to start working on the labs and um, in order to be ready to cover the new material for 304. I think we talked about everything. Uh, one thing you will notice is there is class attendance and um, the class attendance will not be counted based on whether you uh, attend the online uh, synchronous session at 5.30 or not. It will be based on whether you access the material, especially the archives or, or not. So, um, it, of course, the expectation is you will attend, you will do a presentation once. And of course, you also have to listen to the uh, presentations of other groups because they will be part of the quiz. I think I've already covered everything um, for you guys. So, um, as I said, all everything in Blackboard will be under course content. You have the syllabus right now and the class contract that you need like to um, read. The, the material we'll start seeing tomorrow, like the the sit the the quiz for <clears throat> quiz for for the syllabus and the reviews for the exam. What the the TA and I will will start populating these uh, tonight. Okay, well, that's all for 304. I hope uh, you uh, will have an enjoyable semester and I hope that you will be, as we go, you'll be excited about technology. And I say, um, I think the amount of time that you will invest in this course will pay really uh, right away. So you will have a wonderful 
at spring break, oh, sorry, spring semester, and I will um, meet with you online on Thursday, January the 28th. Again, please remember to log on January the 23rd at 5.30 and take the online quiz, the online uh, review exam. You all have a wonderful night and see you uh, on January the 28th. Thank you.